Hello folks, welcome to the Form channel and uh, thanks for tuning in. In this particular video I'm going to review uh, my mount that has been my trusted companion for over 4 years now. The Celestron Advanced VX mount. So, let's get into it. My channel my channel is all about astrophotography so I share equipment reviews and tutorials that also hopefully help you to improve your own astrophotography skills if you like that kind of content please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the button here on the bottom right of the screen and yeah without further ado let's get into this video hi folks uh, just on a personal note i want to give a shout out to celestron iran because celestron iran recently featured my heart nebula on their instagram account so thank you very much celestron iran for sharing my uh, my picture and it also made me realize that i should probably also print out my astrophotography photography pictures more often to, uh, often to see how they turn out uh, uh, in real life, uh, not only on a, on a PC or a computer screen, but also uh, framed like this. And uh, yeah, of course, this picture is taken with my Celestron Advanced VX mount. So uh, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about the specifications of this mount and also some of the, the advantages and the disadvantages that I have uh, personally experienced over the past few years. And I want to show you that there is also some competition. When you look at the price range of the Celestron Advanced VX mount, then uh, there are also some other mounts that you might consider. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into the specs of the Celestron Advanced VX mount. Of course, we are dealing with a computerized uh, German equatorial mount and uh, the, the instrument payload, the payload capacity is about 13.6 kilograms or 30 pounds at a latitude ranging from 7 degrees to 77 degrees. Um, also, the mount head weight is 7.7 .7 kilograms. And then we have here the tripod weight is about 8 kilograms or um, 18 pounds and 70 pounds for the mount head. And uh, we have this accessory tray. You can put eye eyepieces in the tray, for instance. Uh, and that's nice so uh, we have a counterweight of about five kilograms or 12 pounds and nine slew speeds uh, the Celestron advanced vx mount amount also comes with different tracking rates so we have a sidereal a solar and a lunar tracking rate and uh, of course you can use this this mount in the northern and the southern hemisphere it has no gps unfortunately and uh, we have a dovetail uh, compatibility a dual saddle plate and uh, yeah, the, the, it has three aux ports, uh, auxiliary ports. I never used those actually. I did of course use the hand controller uh, port and uh, very important for astrophotography, it uh, has an option to auto guide. I will also get into that a little bit more in the video later on. The hand controller has now a USB uh, USB port and that's nice. So you can just run a USB cable from your hand controller to your laptop, I think alignment procedure so uh, we have a one star alignment even <laughs> really i never use that and a two star alignment and what they do not mention is that with this two star alignment procedure uh, at least in the celestron uh, uh, hand controller you can also add four extra calibration star stars to that alignment procedure to get more accurate guiding i have a video on that so i will refer to it in the description below um, and of course you can also I say you have a solar alignment uh, procedure uh, apparently I never used that one actually and uh, also a last alignment so that is very nice if your uh, mount you you set up your mount in a fixed position maybe in an uh, observatory you have then uh, you can uh, just uh, use the last alignment procedure on your hand controller or on the next remote and then you don't have to go through uh, the the star alignment procedure anymore so that's very nice uh, it also has a periodic error correction and that is uh, interesting because when there are any an inaccuracies in your uh, servo motors here in the RA or declination axis, you can use uh, periodic error correction and it will run for 10 minutes and then you can play back 
um, those 10 minutes to the mount and uh, when there are any inaccuracies the periodic error correction uh, procedure will correct for that and you can run the the pack or pack tool it's also a software program a little bit older but you can use it in combination with phd2 to increase the accuracy of your guiding so that's nice um, we have here a computerized hand controller yeah it's i think that is the standard hand controller of celestron it has 40,000 objects so that's very nice uh, so you, you can also for visual observation it's a nice uh, it's a nice mount of course and you can connect this hand controller to your pc and then you can use next remote for instance to control your uh, mount from your desktop or your laptop um, the total weight is about 21 kilos or 47 pounds i'm sorry i'm mentioning the kilos first time i'm a european <laughs> let's see the included uh, items are the mount itself uh, the accessory tray of course um, uh, the counterweight so it has a five kilograms or 12 pounds counterweight and the hand controller and of course the power so uh, yeah these are the specs and uh, let's uh, move on to the the advantages and the disadvantages i have experienced over the past couple of years so hi folks question of the day what kind of astrophotography mount are you considering to buy or did you buy for your astrophotography hobby please let me know in the description down below so we can get into a little conversation about mounts so again what kind of mount did you buy or are you considering to buy for your astrophotography hobby let's move on with the video so let's talk about the main advantages that I have been experiencing and uh, the first advantage is not uh, connected to, uh, to equipment use or anything but it's the price. I would say it's maybe a little bit Dutch of me to start with the price. <laughs> I think the price is about 800 or 850 dollars or euros so right now I will put a link to the mount uh, in the description below so you can check out the price. Um, but I, I would say that it's pretty 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 good because when you just start out doing astrophotography, or at least when I started out doing astrophotography, I didn't really know whether or not I would uh, come to love or to hate that particular hobby. Uh, and for me it uh, turned out to become a passion, but there are also a lot of challenges involved. Uh, and uh, with that I mean you can have malfunctioning equipment, uh, the weather conditions can, uh, can suddenly change. Um, you have to go through sometimes pretty steep learning curves on how to use uh, guiding software, capturing software, post-processing software. It's not an easy hobby and I can imagine that some people don't want to invest all that time and energy in astrophotography while they can also spend that time on uh, something that gives them more satisfaction. Uh, maybe another hobby or their wife or their children. Um, anyway, so uh, it, it's not nice to have this entry level astrophotography mounts which are relatively cheap to start this hobby. So the second advantage I would mention is the weight of the telescope. You can see when I pick up the mount, it is, uh, oh, it's not light as a feather. I can pretend it is, but <laughs> it's not. But it's, yeah, it's, it's relatively easy to pick up and to carry around and to, to, to set the, the mount up. So that is very nice, especially because I don't, have, um, I don't have an observatory in my backyard. So every time I do a new imaging session, I completely build my, my, my mount up from the ground up and then I image and I tear it down again and the next time I will do the same again. So this allows me to do that without breaking my back. The third advantage would be that it's pretty easy to set up. So you can here see here the alt S, the altitude. Uh, these are the altitude screws and here we have the azimuth screws so to put your mount into the correct position. And they are pretty large knobs, so uh, they are really uh, yeah, yeah, nice to use, uh, easy to use. And then you have these two, uh, two screws that yeah, you can really uh, position your, uh, your, your telescope and it is uh, secure. And uh, I, I like, the, like the bulkiness also of these, uh, these knobs. Uh, so, um, and also uh, the, the, the same goes for the RA and deck. So you can just turn around RA and deck and then you can fix them into position with these uh, uh, screws here. And I would say, um, all in all, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's for me. It was pretty easy to to learn how to use uh, this mount, how to set up this mount. And the fourth thing is uh, that it has the option to auto guide. So you have the auto guiding option, meaning that you have a guide cam, and this guide cam can be connected to the mount. And then you can use software such as PHD2 guiding. 
and it allows you to in increase the accuracy of your guiding and then take images, uh, multi-minute images. Uh, we need to take four or five minute pictures of astronomical objects. This is a five minute, um, I, I have 90 pictures of five minutes stacked together using different filters. So you need that in order to get a nice quality image of your DSO. Um, and also it has spec tool. I almost forgot, P uh, periodic error correction tool. And you can run that together with your PSD2 guiding software to increase the accuracy of your guiding. Let's talk about uh, the three main disadvantages that I have been experiencing over the past uh, five years while using the Celestron Advanced VX mount. Well, the first uh, disadvantage would be the payload capacity. And just, this is just the limitation of the mount. So uh, the payload capacity, it is mentioned that uh, that is 14 kilos or 30 pounds. But I would say when you uh, use it for astrophotography, you have to divide that number for this particular mount at least by three. So your maximum payload capacity would be five or six kilos or about 12 pounds. And um, yeah, because otherwise when you go beyond that, uh, that figure, um, it leads to more inaccuracy in your guiding or it, it, it makes the guiding more, more difficult. Uh, because of the lower quality uh, yeah, surf, uh, servo motors that are uh, in this mount. I would say that's something to take into account when uh, buying this mount. Uh, if you want a big scope and a big guide scope, I would, I would definitely look at a higher price range and buy another mount. Um, the second one is, yeah, because of the lower quality servo motors, I have been noticing uh, that I have uh, backlash issues. And they increased these issues over the past five years. I tried to solve it myself. I have a, a video, I will link it also in the description down below on how I try to deal with my backlash by repositioning my, uh, my, the wheels of my RA and deck motors. Um, put that in the description down below. Um, but anyway, that's something that I've been dealing with. And the final issue, or the final uh, disadvantage, I would say is that I have to connect my telescope to my PC via the hand controller. But I, of course, would much rather see just a USB input in this mount so I can um, yeah, just run a, a USB cable directly from my mount to my PC. So these are the three main advantages that I have to uh, have been dealing with for the past uh, couple of years. And uh, yeah, let's get into the, uh, the comparison tool that I uh, have made because there is also some competition uh, out there that uh, yeah, you can also buy another mount with similar capabilities. So let's check that out. So uh, on my site, I also have this Astro Shop mounts under construction uh, comparison tool. <laughs> You're welcome to check it out. And uh, yeah, I all only checked uh, North American and European uh, shops right now, uh, but I'm planning on uh, on extending this database, of course, this, uh, this spreadsheet basically. Um, you can of course also choose different brands if you are really have a preferred brand for a mount. And I would say when you are getting into astrophotography, you would always check on auto guiding. You want auto guiding in your mount. And when we want to compare uh, other mounts to the Celestron Advanced VX, we have to say that uh, the maximum payload capacity of the Celestron Advanced VX is about, I think, 14 kilos or about 30, 33 pounds. So let's say that we want to compare it to other mounts that can support at least uh, 10 kilograms of payload capacity. And that is for visual observations uh, usually. So you have to divide that by two or three. So uh, I would say you want at least uh, four or five kilos of, uh, of, of capacity to for astrophotography. Um, and the maximum price, I would say, yeah, the Celestron Advanced VX mount is below uh, 1,000 US dollars or 1,000 euros. So if we then search uh, my uh, little database, which I want to extend uh, still, there are actually two competitors. And this one, it really surprised me, the Meet LX85. I never heard of it before and I can find, uh, I can find some information on it. I will show you the information, but I do not see a lot of user experiences of the, with the Meet LX85. So if you own one or if you bought one or have some experience, I'm really interested in hearing from you uh, how this mount uh, performs. Uh, and the other one would be the Ioptron CEM or SEM 25P. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the Celestron uh, Advanced VX. But yeah, let's, let's check those out. So you can basically uh, look at Opt, uh, OptCorp or Amazon or High Point, Point 7 t Scientific. I have links here to the, to the stores. And uh, yeah, when we look at the uh, Ioptron CEM or SEM 25P, um, I have the specs here from High Point Scientific side. 
um, then you can see that uh, yeah the payload uh, capacity or the weight capacity here is 27 pounds for instance so it's a little bit uh, less as compared to Celestron Advanced VX which has 33 pounds or uh, I would say about 15 kilos so this would be about 12 or 13 kilos or the max of maximum payload capacity it has uh, more objects in the database uh, 150 instead of 40 so if you want a nice uh, nice hand controller then uh, the ioptron has more uh, objects uh, what also I also noticed is that it had GPS where is it um, cannot find it oh yeah includes gps yes and it also includes periodic error correction so that would be nice the latitude range is uh, 0 to 60 and that is a bit different from the celestron advanced vx which has a latitude range of 7 to 77 uh, degrees so depending on where you are you are you might want to choose the one or the other uh, yeah, ESCOM driver would be uh, working about the same, I would guess. And uh, yeah, so I think the main difference is that uh, the payload capacity is a little bit less, but it has a GPS system incorporated and um, the latitude position is a little bit different. And yeah, it has more uh, objects in the database. So interesting, I would, I would definitely also consider the IOPTRON SAM 25P. It's a little bit more expensive, it goes for 8 uh 9.98 right now and uh, at least at amazon when i look at the prices for the avx is 8.99 so it's somewhat cheaper um and then this mystery mount or at least a mystery mount to me the meat lx85 um i, I it's only uh, 700 dollars so the price is very favorable and yeah but i i just looked at the specifications and indeed it says that uh, it is germinal equatorial mount and the, the instrument capacity or the payload capacity is about the same as the celestron avx so 33 pounds or about 15 kilos of payload capacity so yeah that's not different it has a pack uh, period a periodic error correction um, tool or maybe it's in the hand controller i don't know and uh, yeah it has guiding also, uh, auto guiding. It has some aux ports, uh, aux uh, auxiliary ports, and uh, yeah. So uh, the total weight about uh, 34 pounds. It it is really really comparable uh, to the to the Celestron, the Advanced VX. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would say this on paper. This is also an entry level astrophotography mount. It has guiding. It has a pack tool. It can. Uh, uh, take up to 33 pounds which which would be visual observ uh, observations I think but uh, yeah okay uh, it, it, it in, in theory this could be a nice entry level uh, as a photography mount so if you have any experiencing uh, experiences using the meet LX85 mount or the ioptron uh, SAM 25p mounts please leave your uh, comments in the description down below because I'm really interested in these uh, these alternatives so I'm a little bit uh, doubting whether or not I should mention this, but uh, I know that you will be mad if I do not mention the Hack 5 Pro. So here we go, the Skywatcher HAQ5 or Hack 5 Pro is also a very popular mount, but it's, it's just be, be uh, it's, it's just a bit higher than a 1,000 uh, US dollar range. So at high point scientific at least, it sells now for 1,150. And uh, yeah, so we will include it anyway. So we have an equatorial mount here, a computerized to go to equatorial mount. So that's very similar, of course, to the Celestron Advanced VX and the other mounts we just discussed. And the weight capacity is also about 30 pounds or yeah, I think about 14 kilos. Um, you can see, yeah, of course it includes the tripod and the objects in the database. It's uh, about similar to the Celestron, a bit more, the 42,900 instead of 40,000. Um, let's see, we have then uh, no integrated Wi-Fi, but I think none of the others have. And it's not, it, it, it does not include, uh, include the GPS. I think it's only the um, IOPTRON now that includes GPS actually. Um, and let's see, it has a periodic error correction as well. And it has a Vixen type saddle uh, uh, plate. So that's a bit different, I think, to the Dolph uh, uh, plate on the Celestron Advanced VX. Um, and a uh, hand controller is included, of course, and you get a two year uh, warranty, at least at High Point Scientific. And uh, yeah, so that's also nice to consider the Skywatcher uh, Hack 5 Pro go to equatorial mount. And uh, yeah, just above uh, the 1000 uh, US dollar range, but uh, yeah, uh, let's include that anyway. So we're at the end of the video. Thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions on the Celestron Advanced VX mount, how to set it up, 
how to polar align, how to star align, how to use PSD uh, guiding, whatever. Um, please put that in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. And also the question of the day, what kind of astrophotography mount are you using or are you considering of buying for your astrophotography hobby? Please let me know in the comment section down below and we can get into a little conversation about the quality of the different mounts that are out there on the market. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate uh, that. And uh, thanks for watching. Clear skies. See you next time. Bye bye.